Hello you guys! So I'm back and I'm just going to start playing with these watercolors. This is the, um, for those of you just joining, this is the spring watercolor uh, set that I sent out in the monthly watercolor subscription and some of the paintings that I've already done with these beautiful watercolors. So these ones are by my Mary Blue and it's a great set. It's really nicely curated. I think it does a lot. It comes with paper and brushes and also one of my handmade watercolors inspired by Monet. So it's a lot of fun. I really, really love the whole idea behind the subscriptions and I'm getting such great feedback from you guys on it. So a few of you asked if I could show you how to paint um, some of these basic tulips and then maybe even expand on it. So I'm going to be using the watercolor paper in the challenge. So we'll just use one of these strips here and maybe we'll just kind of paint with these. This is uh, Rubens 50-50 so it's always best to use 100% cotton but I do put in some practice papers because they're inexpensive. I also just got in the Jax cotton which is 100% cotton watercolor paper. 300 G um, <clears throat> 300 grams 140 pound so it is around like it's very inexpensive because I've gotten some really good deals on it in being able to produce it and bring it to you guys uh, for how long I don't know I just have a lot of it right now so it is selling quickly I've restocked it four times trying to keep it in but um, it's somewhere in between Fabriano and Arsh I think you'll really enjoy it. It's perfect for beginners. It will not run away with you. And you'll see because I'm going to paint with it. Actually, I painted all of these um, on that paper. And this is a permanent marker. This is a double-ended marker that I sell on my website. So if you can't find these, you can go to Jack's Watercolor and get these. So this is the My Mary Blue set. These are from Italy. They are a honey-based watercolor. I believe they're honey-based. And they're just lovely. Really pretty. So, you know, the challenge cards in the watercolor subscription, they have all kinds of things. And I, I did go over this in a previous video, in the opening video. So if you want to learn more about what's in this kit, I will link that for you below. So I'm just going to do a pretty basic swatch here. Let's put this on a tin. They're magnetized, by the way. Must be magnetized. It just makes the whole process so much easier. And as you can see, they're very fluid. They're really beautiful. And they mix well together. For sure. This is the primary yellow. And this is the um, really beautiful kind of permanent red light is very orangey and when mixed with the yellow you get that gorgeous bright orange that you see in florals and tulips but it's not overly bright and not high tint you know not very high tinting and then this is the more uh, warmer kind of rosy color so this is not only pretty with this set but it's also great for roses And then the green gold, which I'm going to put on the end. Although you can mix it with this, we've mixed just fine. I just really want to emphasize the yellowy kind of gold. And then we've got a beautiful Prussian blue instead of a standard blue, which makes a lovely purple when mixed with that pink. And that's what I wanted to show you. So just by taking this little swatch, this is Fabriano 5050 watercolor paper, so it's 50% cotton. It kind of shows you a basic swatch and I always do this in the beginning of working with colors just to remind myself of what the possibilities are and this is just you know one two three four five six seven eight nine ten possibilities that is not even that's not even a scratch oops oh that's a happy accident here I want you not to be afraid of messing up your paper so there we go look at that that is luscious to me I love that <laughs> I know you're like oh my gosh I have some people that I teach that literally they can't take it 
So this is um, Moni Green, and this is one of my own handmade watercolors. So I'm just putting some on my brush. I'm going to uh, just kind of wipe it down. So I think sometimes you can start with so many things. You could start with the stem. You could start with the, you know, the flower ball. Um, whatever it is that you want to start with, you are welcome to start with. So why don't we do one starting with the stem and one starting with the flowers themselves, okay? And looking at the challenge card, you kind of have a point of reference, right, for this. And you go your own way, right? Three tulips and some leaves. So say this first tulip has kind of a straight stem. So we're just going to do that, wet it down, and evolve that stem out just a bit. But don't try to be perfect with it. Just go like that, okay? And when I say go like that, I just mean don't try to be annoyingly perfect, right? You can wet your brush and even grab some yellow. Because this is a lovely green, it's going to do a lot. And you can cast a little yellow on the side, which I think is lovely, you know? So look at that so far. Isn't that pretty? And we've got those smudges that are just going to be gorgeous. In fact, why don't we just go ahead and wet some of these smudges? I love them because they are texture. And texture is great, you know? So I'm just going to randomly wet some areas here just to show you that watercolor is a loose medium. You don't have to be perfect. So say we do this first one in a little pink, okay? So I'm going to take a little bit of the rose color and I'm going to lay the side of my brush just for one way to do it. And we can, this is almost dry, so we can go ahead and just lay this right over and we're just going to do like a nice swoopy motion right like that. And that is going to give us a really nice kind of base to the first curve. If we want it to be a little bit more curved, then you can go again and do another swoop. And what that's done is it's unevenly dispersed some watercolors. So you can see I have kind of like a line there as like a petal would be. And that is kind of starting to shape my version. So that now I'm going to go over to the other color. The other color is the... Um, the permanent red light and it's got a little more orangey tone so now let's go ahead and go on the other side here and um, go ahead and just swoop some more color and what I'm doing is just kind of meeting this area now you can choose to go over it if you want to you can go under it like I did so where I'm just kind of meeting here and and swooping up and that's a really nice loose look, right? And I've already got this little puddle going over here, which is great because we can do something else with that later. And then maybe on the other side, on the outside, I'm just gonna take the yellow and go ahead and just bring the yellow up. So we're gonna bring the yellow from down here and let it mix in and just come right up and just be this lovely, just luscious, loose, bit of yellow and it's going to kind of peel out this way and that's fine because we will work with that right if you want to stop it and you you feeling like oh gosh let's stop that I don't want that to happen then you just take a cloth and you just dry it back just like that and you can fix it that easily very very easily there was a little hair on my cloth figures <laughs> That's what happens when you have dogs. Okay, so here you can do whatever you want. You can dry this off. Um, if you don't want this puddle here, you can take some of the color away. You know, you can just play with it. You can charge in with some more color. So I can come in and I can just kind of reinforce the shape and give it a little more of a hard line. I particularly love that. Um, go back to this uh, permanent red light and maybe enforce that line that we accidentally got right there. See how that, that to me is heaven. I love that. And then even maybe just dry brush in a little bit of, you know, some, some strokey lines here and here. 
and that's just kind of gonna give us that you know impression even so much more I can take a little bit more and my brush is pretty dry now so I can kind of sketch in a little bit of a loose line and look at how delicious that is right and then what, what do we do with the light well we can leave it there or you can just lightly brush in some water and it will kind of just you know bleed in and now like leave it alone and see what it does right just leave it alone for now so what do we do with the next one well we can either develop our leaves or let this dry I say for this one let's let it dry and go on to another tulip so let's do the blue one so I'm just going to take blue on my brush. And by the way, if you like this brush, this is available on my website. It's the detailed green painting set, and I will link it below in the description box. It's a great set, and it comes with this um, like brush holder. It comes with a second brush that's a little bit more fine detail, so a smaller one and a medium size, and then a little pot to mix watercolor or use for water just to maybe even um, add water to, and liquid, you know, make your watercolors just a little more liquid or more fluid. So let's see what we have on our brush. So we're, we want another one of these shapes, right? Now you can go at this shape like I did, or you can be even like, like that. You know, where you do a softer version here, then grab a little more color and maybe start just kind of sketching loosely what this tulip might look like into that nice little shape. Now this one has, uh, if you wanted to follow this pattern, it has this center shape. So maybe this blue one, we're going to take a little bit lighter version and we'll paint that little shape there and paint this shape here right and then take a little harder stroke and paint this shape here so you see how I'm changing that shape just by dry brushing in that petal this to me is a lot of fun because you get to do a lot of painting and a lot of times uh, you know you have to be careful not to overwork your painting but doing it this way is my style all the way I love to do it because it allows me to paint and really just kind of do something on paper with the watercolors without it getting overworked but yet I feel like I'm doing something right now here's one thing that might blow your mind might not I don't know one thing we could do is we could draw in with a tool and this is on the Jack's uh, watercolor paper we can score in some light lines into our tulip which I love to do I think that's fun into the area that is like more pale you know I think that's really cool then this area here let's grab a little green gold and mix it and see if I think it looks a little too green but let's use that as some of the stem okay just going into there grab a little more green gold and mix that in and then maybe we'll come up with a very loose leaf now you see that leaf how I dry brushed it in and it's got some lovely like dry brushing effects and a mix of colors now we're going to pick up a little bit more of the blue and mix it into the green and just again charge up really simple just like that is that fun now we're going to take a little bit of my green and we're going the other side and we're just going to charge up really nice and expressive petal and then come over here and cross over and dry brush right through that now you've got a situation where that's going underneath so we can carry that down here and just kind of play with the shapes crisscrossing back and forth just like that if you want this to be a little lighter you don't want it to be as strong you could add some water to it encourage even some backwashing or you can just take a towel and just dry some out or add it back in 
So see how easy that is? Really simple. You're not really stuck with anything. How about we mix a little bit of blue in with my Monet Green so I can show you how pretty this is. And we're going to do a petal here. So this is the outer shape of the petal. And then I'm going to add water to lighten it up. And just go like there and let it just kind of do its thing. Maybe charge up in a couple of areas some of the color just to let it bleed. This to me is again so much fun to do because I'm doing something. And maybe even I'll go over here and take some of that color and drag it in. Hello. And play with the shape. Like, do I want this shape to go this way? Do I want it to go the other way? I don't know. Can't decide, so I'm just going to play, darkening some of the areas. So the one behind it is going to be darker than the one in front of it, is my thought process here. And what am I going to do here? We're going to go ahead and, and paint this shape over it. So let's grab a little more blue and make this the overlapping leaf. And as it overlaps, it becomes more opaque going on to something really kind of textural and maybe even I will score in a really interesting detail. Cool, right? And I can even score in another one. I can even dip this, dip something in to the paint, get a little more wet. and just play. You guys got to learn to play and not be afraid of this. Look at that beautiful color. I mixed a little bit of water onto the tip of my plastic here. This is just one of those um, leaves that comes with a piece of plastic. You can use a card, a stick, anything. A palette knife just whatever it is you're you're got in your hand you use your fingernails and I'm scoring in and I love the look of that scoring I actually want to re-wet this area here a little bit and maybe score in you see how I'm scoring that in and it's um, it's giving me such lovely details but still very, very loose. Uh, so here, what are we going to do? I don't know. I'm kind of going to leave it. Let's do it. Oh, I just messed up. doesn't matter. Let's do one more. So this one's going to be uh, very yellow. So I'm just going to do really bright yellow there. And I'll just scrub at that green, and it'll go away. <laughs> just scrub it away. There we go. Never be afraid. Let's take some of the the orangey red and block in some of this color here. And over here. And it's going to sit behind this leaf. So I'm just going to kind of paint it that way. Leaving some white space just using the tip of my brush dipping it into the rose color and I'm just going to kind of reinforce this little line here making this smaller and don't worry about the green we can rub it out most of them you can anyway you can add a little bit okay there we go I like the mistakes the texture is beautiful you know. Uh, so let's work on establishing more stem. So just painting that down. I kind of love the look of adding a little bit of the blue to one side on these stems and then maybe mixing it with some of the green so that I have multiple greens. And I'm just adding some water to the bottom just to loosen it up and 
kind of see what the watercolor does. And this one, just going to kind of go for it a little bit more here. But we're going to set that behind this one because I don't want to, I don't know, I don't feel like it should go over it. And that's just a personal choice, you know. And maybe I'll score score the watercolor just a bit more. Let's just give it some color and then drag it. And again, I'm not painting to get something. I'm painting to enjoy, you know? I'm painting not to frame, but to like just have fun. If you notice, I've got all my watercolor paper lined up under here. I'm probably scoring the rest of it. Let's just move that. Because um, this should be fun. It should be fun. Let me remind you, just have a good time. Don't worry about what you're going to get, what you're not going to get. Just experiment, because this is how you're going to use these lovely subscriptions to find out watercolor that you love, colors that you don't love, you know, what inspires you as an artist. You know, how dark do you like to go? Let's go back in here and maybe we'll use the side of my brush to establish one of these like watermarks, right? So to get one of these watermarks, I'm going to go ahead and just add a very juicy line of paint. And then I'm going to tilt my paint up and I'm going to join it with some water. Luscious. Okay. And then if we want more of a watermark, then you just take some more water and wash it and then just let it kind of do its thing. And then as it starts to settle, you can even, on the 100% cotton, you can even just kind of splash in a little bit, like charge in a little bit more water. And that will help kind of encourage it to have more of a watermark. See, just taking some water. A lot of it actually. See how much water that is? It, it's like moving around. So you get a feel for how much water. And then we're going to see what we get. Now, watercolor is very un unpredictable. So you might get a backwash like this. You might not. You can go back in and even like straighten a backwash out or charge in more color and water and just see what it does. See, I just added some water to the other side. You can also go ahead in and take your scratching tool and re go back and forth and even smear some of this around, you know, and see what you get. Draw with it. So this one's almost dry, so let's go back in and maybe draw in. Take a little bit of my pink and maybe draw in like I'm pencil drawing in. You know, a, a glass brush would would work really good too. We have some of those in the store right now. With those glass ink brushes to scratch watercolor paper it would be really fun to use. So I'm just playing with some texture and some light by scraping some in. And then I'll take some yellow, maybe go back in here, I have a, oh, we got these sponges in the store and they kind of help me dry off my brush a little bit when I, when I want to erase a little color, so if I wanted to mix this into a little bit more orange. So I'm kind of removing a little bit of the color until I get what I want and then that can just dry. Or maybe I'll just smear it more and then go back in and add a harder line just to, just for fun. 
now that I've got this wet. And if you notice, this paper can be really reworked. And that's what I like about it, is I can work it. I can scrub it and, and take layers off of it, like I'm doing right now. I'm, I'm absolutely scratching and scoring it, and it's handling things really well. I haven't gone through the paper. It's really workable. So which one do you like so far? It's really cool, right? Um, so this has got a very, very rough look to it. I'm kind of having fun. Um, so now I'm going to go back in and mix some of these colors together and wash it back. And I'm just going to do what I usually do, which is just paint right over things. Um, but in a very transparent way so that it doesn't look like it's going over things it looks like it's going back now the, the secret to doing this is not to go over it a million times because obviously if you go over it a million times what's going to happen is you will s eventually dislodge the watercolor underneath so this is a it's an after effect yes and I am painting right over the other stuff but at the same time I'm not trying to move anything I'm not trying to go over this a lot so that this becomes the front the foreground I'm just uh, adding in these beautiful light layers here just to fill my background with some interesting you know foliage and colors without having to pre-plan that before so a lot of you guys have asked me you know how do I get these in here a lot of times I will add them later you know and not worry about it again I'm hitting some of the blue here and it's bleeding I don't care about that it's fine this is part of my style I like the looseness of it and if you notice now it this looks so much nicer to me if anything it's a little still a little bit stiff but sometimes um, I find that tulip leaves can be a little bit stiff so maybe we'll just unstiffen some of these shapes by going over them uh, with the Monet color and almost like giving you double vision imprints you know where you're like oh is that where the leaf starts and starts stop starts and stops or is that not you know so maybe I have some that are predictable and some that are not and I kind of like that because I don't want this to look so planned. I want it to look a lot more rough. So there we go. So there's that. Now let's go in here and and of course I love it just the way it is but if we want to just add a glaze we can do that very easily because it's dry. Mm. And I'm using straight paint, if you notice, right out of the thing here. I'm not even mixing it very barely. I'm just going to give it some light, a little glaze of that yellow really brightens things up. And then again, following that same line, I'm just kind of going to partially charge in a little bit of color. And you notice how it creates a line because I haven't wet this entire petal. So by not wetting that entire spot, I ended up with a nice line that's reinforced there. And I, I kind of really love that there. I'm going to leave it. And then under here, I'm just going to continue that over. So it's got a little more continuity to the shape. Same thing over here. I want my shapes uh, to have texture, but I also kind of want a little more continuity. I find that the eye doesn't need to, you know, see too many different things. And if you give the eye something to kind of lock onto that's more solid, it tends to read better even if it's a loose shape. Now I see this big white piece here and I'm kind of perplexed. What should I do with it? Should I color it? Should I not? I wonder what it would look like if I add a little bit, like just kind of wet it down a little bit to soften, to soften the look of it, of the dry brushing, and then maybe grab a little bit of the pink and mix it in with the blue, but then make it real light, and then charge in 
some of that purple like a shadow. So it's just not all one color. It's got a little bit of the pink mixed in with the blue. Yeah, I like that. Can you see it? It's still a little bright because it's wet. But see what I did is I took some of the the I took some of the pink, which is the Rose Lake, and I mixed it in with some of the Prussian for like that pinky tone. And then I just kind of scrape it around the colored areas until I get what I want. And I'm, I'm ending up with some really pretty little varieties of the color just by wetting it down and charging that in. You can even remove some color and then put the pink in there if you want. I can even go right in and just basically take some of this pink and paint it right in there. Just as a way to express, you know, not let the blue be so one color blue. Isn't that beautiful? Now, what is standing out to me now, if I look at this, is this here. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and take this pink and just add it right there. I like that, very loose. And we're gonna take some of the harshness of the white. And then this, I'm gonna add some water to it and see what it does. And maybe rub out some of the stem because it was a little harsh. And disperse it down here because it dried very strong. And it could be a little thicker. This one too, we can just soften a side of it. And here, soften a side of it with a bunch of water. You can always dry it off on the towel. See, I'm drying this off on my towel. And then going back and I can reinforce this line here. Yeah, I like, I like. Um, here, if you find that you got too crazy, you can either blend it out, let it dry, and then reestablish the thinner line there or we can remove it let that fade into the background and then come back in with some of your colors just like that well, there we go and thus another tulip idea pretty cool huh I likey, I likey. All right, so let me know what you decide to do. Keep experimenting, keep playing. Don't get stuck in one idea. I mean, like, even if you wanted this to really pop forward, you could, I wonder what this would look like. Let's just, for the sake of argument, go ahead and mix up some of our green with our blue and feed this down and see what happens. That's not too bad, actually. We could let that dry, because we can always go back in and remove it. Just give it a bunch of color splash there and see what happens. I kind of feel like that's kind of interesting, because this one turned out so big. It's right there in the front center, so it might actually turn out good. Now, it's bleeding a little to the side. That's really not a problem. So to me, just temporarily, I would just wipe it away and see how that looks because I can always add color back later but I might want to play with the illusion of that coming across now remember we scored that but that's that doesn't bother me I actually just you know I just want to start somewhere and play with this and see so now I've established here's what I've established I've learned a lot about my colors I've learned what I like what I didn't like I I freely played and got to express the energy and paint. I got to learn about how these colors mix together and what I liked and how I got those shapes. I experimented with scoring and adding a little pink as a way to, you know, drift away from just a one tone 
on the thing. This is what I did here is there's there's a slight little bit of pink here that you just don't see. So all of these things make up parts, right? So maybe I love the way this flower turned out, but I might not like all of the ones here. I might love this one and use that in another one. I might love this one, right? Love this flower, maybe not like this one as much, or love this combination here. This is all experimentation. So you want to continue to try different things and paint these. Flip this over and use the back side. Maybe do two more here. And just keep painting because every time you do, you're going to find out so much more about yourself and you're just going to have a great time. Have a great one, guys, and enjoy this Tulip subscription. I can't wait to see what you paint. Happy painting, and I will catch you guys again soon.